Okay, post-trib moment number 49. Here again we have Steve Anderson spewing his satanic heresy of replacement theology held by the Catholic Church. They believe the same way. Um, this is not held by Bible-believing Christians, and I'm going to show you the very clear teachings in Scripture that debunk this satanic heresy that he's going to say here. But listen to some of this. Now, the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine rests very heavily on the idea that the Jews are God's chosen people. Yeah, it does, because that's what the Bible teaches. And that the nation of Israel is under the blessing of God. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 hold on there a second, stupid. We do not say that the blessing of God is on the nation of Israel right now. Okay, that's the purpose of the time of Jacob. You know, Jacob, Israel, you know. That's a time of Jacob's trouble. The whole purpose there of that time period that's coming is that the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, will be corrected. They don't believe the New Testament right now, so God is going to confirm the New Testament with seven years of signs and wonders. All right. I really hate to tell you, little silly boy here, but God is going to be dumping the Gentile nations soon and returning his attention back to the Jews. And I'm going to show you that in Scripture here in just a minute. And if I could just get you to understand that the nation of Israel, so-called, is not under God's blessing and that they are not God's chosen people. I if, if I could just get you to understand that, that the nation of Israel is not God's chosen people, then you'd be a satanic little imp like this one. I think you'll have no trouble at all realizing that the rapture comes after the tribulation just by a simple reading of Matthew 24. Yeah, just like I said in my poster rapture thieves sermon. They steal promises that God gave to Israel. This is replacement theology. This isn't anything new. This is just satanic Roman Catholic philosophy. That's all this is. And Mark 13. But let me prove to you that uh, the so-called nation of Israel is not the people of God and, and that they are not the elect. They are not his chosen people. Uh, they are not under his blessing, but they are under his wrath. Uh, again, they are under God's judgment okay right now so he's lying he's saying if they were God's chosen people they would be in all saved and all Christians what an idiot okay that's the whole time period of the time of Jacob's trouble which is coming that's the reason for it we could turn to many places but I think Ephesians 2 says it best the Bible reads in Ephesians chapter 2 uh, verses 8 and 9 for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. Listen to verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Oh, yes, so that means that we've replaced the Jews. That's what this little idiot believes. That's not what the Bible teaches. Okay, we are born in through a spirit of adoption, but that doesn't mean that we replace the nation of Israel. That doesn't mean that the nation of Israel has been done away with. This is a satanic lie. So that right there tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 that we were in time past Gentiles according to the flesh. That means that we are no longer Gentiles in God's eyes. The Bible says we were in time past aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. But he says now, in verse 19, Now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So the Bible very clearly tells in Ephesians 2 that if we're saved, we are citizens of Israel, we are not foreigners, we're not aliens, we're not strangers, we're not Gentiles. And that proves that we replace Israel. Where does it say that we replace Israel? It doesn't. It says that now you become a citizen. There, you know, we're born into a spirit of adoption. We are, we are not replacing Israel. We're just now part of it. We, we inherit some of the promises that come to them. This is ridiculous. This is sat satanic philosophy here. We're citizens of Israel. The Bible says in Romans 2, for, ye, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, verse 28, Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. 
And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, not of the letter, which, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So the Bible tells us really clearly that he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. See, again, replacement theology. That's all this is. This thing has been taught for centuries. This is satanic. This is held by the Catholic Church. That's why they went out and killed Jews right and left. Okay, this here, I have to wonder if the guy's saved, teaching this heretical, damnable doctrine. Just because someone looks like a Jew or claims to be descended from Abraham or claims to be descended from Israel, that doesn't make them a Jew. The Bible says a true Jew... Is a Jew is one after the flesh, according to Paul in Romans chapter 11. Okay? And the fact, let me just show you here. The fact that a Christian is born in with a, by a spirit of adoption does not somehow mean that now we are Jews and, you know, and the others are not. You know, the people in Israel are not. That's nonsense. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Be Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel. Okay? And it goes into that. You can read those verses there. Okay? It's talking about how Israel was in sin. But, you know, God, God does not cast away them as people because a few of them are in sin, or a lot of them are in sin. They are still there. They are still God's chosen people. He, you know, he preserved them. He made a covenant with them. I mean, this, this stuff is just, it's, it's Bible. And this liar over here does not understand these things. You know, or, and he's actually covering it up. Okay? And by the way, you say, well, it's spiritual, it's spiritual, it's spiritual. Oh, really? If by any means, I'm, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Paul is not talking about Gentiles. Okay? He's talking about the Jews. And he's saying that he wants to save some of those. And we'll see some of the more uh, serious promises as we continue here. Let's watch a little bit more of this nonsense. Is the one who's a true in Jew inwardly. That's why it said in Esther that many of the people became Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Well, if you can become a Jew, then obviously that is something that has to do with your heart, not just with your physical lineage. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. It was the promise was made to Abraham and to his seed. Okay. This guy doesn't know the Bible. It's ridiculous. That's why the Bible said, Think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. In other words, what was going on there in the Bible is the Lord was simply saying, Don't think that you're saved automatically because you are a Jew according to the flesh. That's all that's going on there. And he's twisting this to say that the Jews somehow now are not saved. He's a liar. You say, well, I still think that the Jews are God's people. I still think that the nation of Israel is God's people. Well, the Bible flat out told you in Romans 2, 28 and 29 that he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And the Bible flat out told you in Ephesians 2 that we as Gentiles are citizens of Israel. Okay, let me just stop here for just another minute. Let me show you something else. He talks about Matthew 24 being doctrinally for us today as Christians. You know, this is our chapter. You know, he steals it from Israel. All right, how about Matthew chapter 24, verse 32? Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. What is that talking about? Well, glory to God, that's talking about the Gentile nations coming to America and creating a new America, you know, replacement theology of America is now the nation of Israel. Oh, well, then you have a big problem there because, you see, the generation that founded America has passed away. Ooh, that doesn't work. Well, maybe we can spiritualize the word generation. Yeah, maybe that would be a good idea. Uh, no. And he'll go on to talk about, you know, the nation of Israel. The true nation of Israel right now that's over there, you know, geographic Israel, you know, over there with Jerusalem and everything else. He goes on to talk about, oh, they're not really the Jews. Okay, 
then how do you explain this prophecy right here? The prop prophecy that was fil fulfilled in 1948. Okay, and that generation has not passed away yet. How do you explain this? This is Bible prophecy of a geographic location. Go up here again. Where is the verse? I know it when I see it in my Bible, but this is hard here. Okay, let them in Judea, which be in Judea. Um, how does that work out? If you're talking about white people that came to America. See? This is satanic heresy that this little devil is preaching. Now, just think about it for a moment. Throughout the Old Testament, did God allow the children of Israel to live in the promised land when they were in unbelief? No. If you remember, when they didn't believe God, they were not allowed to enter the promised land. Then, finally, when they believed Him, they were allowed to enter with Joshua. Then later, they worshipped other gods. God removed them from the promised land. Then See, again, here we're using the argument, well, because they're in sin, then they can't be God's chosen people in the land of Israel. Okay, is there some point in time when the whites are going to go over there, the, the Christians, you know, the born-again Christians, independent fundamental Baptists are somehow going to go and live in Jerusalem? And that generation that does that will not pass away till all things be fulfilled? I mean, give me a break. This is, this is beyond, you know, idiocy. And when they turned back to the Lord their God, they were brought back into the promised land. Then when they rejected Jesus Christ, they were removed and scattered from the promised land. And then in 1948, they all believed on Jesus Christ, and then they got put back in the promised land. Is that <laughs> What's the, time of the, the purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble? See how I did it again? Oh, they, they believed in Jesus, so then they went back to the promised land. Hey, stupid, they come back in unbelief. You say, well, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think that they have to come back and be, you know, all Christians before the Lord will accept them. Really? Let's go back to Romans chapter 11. Okay, and I've said this again and again and again. All right, uh, Romans 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye be wise in your own conceits, like this little conceited fool here. Now look at this. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. God's about done with the Gentile nations. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them. God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham and his seed after the flesh, when I shall take away their sins. Now look at this. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. And this little lion devil no. over here will say, every time that the word elect shows up in the New Testament, it always refers to Christians and never to the Jews. Oh, really? Oh, really? How about that? How about this? How about this reference right here? Clearly speaking about the nation of Israel. And let me just show you another little thing here. Uh, talking about um, the branches, you know, if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree wert graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, that's a picture of a saved Gentile right there. Wild olive tree graft in to the natural tree there, the tree of Israel. We're grafted in, we are, we are born in by a spirit of adoption. Okay, we are not the seed of Abraham. You know, if you're a Gentile believer, you are not the seed of Abraham. And give me a break. Boast not against the branches. Don't come like this little imp right here and say, Oh, the Jews are bad, they're evil, they're horrible, and everything else. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt will say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, that's true. You know, the nation of Israel rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And that's why salvation came to the Gentiles. If they would have accepted Jesus Christ in the book of Acts, we probably would have never gotten saved. But the fact is, they did. You know, but look what it says here. Well, well, that's true. 
Because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest, standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Don't get proud and prideful and say, Oh, I'm better than the Jews, and the Jews are gone and everything else, like this little liar right here. Now look at this. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Ooh, you better be careful. That's a warning. Don't speak against the nation of Israel. Don't speak against those branches that right now, those Jewish people that are in unbelief. They are the seed of Abraham. They have a covenant, an everlasting covenant made between God and them. And I'll tell you what, when he comes out and he says, oh, the, the Jews are no more, they're, they're gone and everything, he's calling God a liar. Really, really, really dangerous. Very, very dangerous what this novice is doing. They still don't believe in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Exactly. That's exactly what the preacher, he just proved the preacher of rapture. God's not appointed the Christians, the body of Christ, to wrath, but he has appointed the nation of Israel to his wrath. They're going to get to experience it for seven years, the time of Jacob's trouble. This is proving the pre-tribulation rapture. See, the unsaved unbelievers that populate the nation of Israel, which is 99% of them, God's wrath is abiding on them. Not yes, that's the time of Jacob's trouble. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's proving the pre-tribulation rapture. Not God's blessing. Not the blessing of God. The wrath of God. And not only that, but they're not even Jews. They say they're Jews. Yes, they are Jews, according to the flesh. Again, replacement theology. He's calling God a liar. God said in the last days that there would be the nation of Israel would come back. That's not America. That's not the white Europeans that came over to the, you know, the European islands or something, now, they are the, now they're the Jews or something ridiculous. That's retarded. Okay, I mean, there's no nice way for me to put it. Whatever. But are not, but do lie. The Bible says they're the synagogue of Satan, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. He said, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. And so the so-called nation of Israel is a fraud. Started in 1948 by the Satanic United Nations, by the House of Rothschild. That wasn't God that put them in the promised land. Oh, okay. Then I guess God lied in Matthew chapter 24. Who is the fig tree? The fig tree in Matthew chapter 24 that the Bible prophesies would be reborn. Those people that are in Judea, you know. Right down in here. Where are we at here? Right here, verse 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. Who's the fig tree? Because God did not allow them to enter the promised land because of unbelief. And they are still in unbelief to this day. And they were not put there by God. They were put there by Satan because they... Oh, okay. So when Jesus Christ says that they're going to come back into the land and possess it and have their own government, then I guess this is Satan. He just said they weren't put there by God. They were put there by Satan. So he's calling God Satan here. That will be the seat of the Antichrist government. So don't be fooled by this talk about Israel and the Jews being God's chosen people. Christians are God's chosen people. That's why the word elect, every time it's used in the New Testament, is referring to the believers, not referring to the nation of Israel. Because in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're following this guy... You better get as far away from him as you can. You know, he's going to bring satanic curses onto your home. This guy is so false. He doesn't know scripture. He is just lying and blaspheming the Lord. I mean, he is a deceiver. He is a false prophet. 